Hey guys, welcome to Part-Time Table Topper. My name is Adam and I'm here with my second tutorial video for you today. So the first one we did were these monolith glowing rune standing stones, which if you haven't watched that, definitely go check it out. Um, I hope you found them helpful if you did. Now, the project today is gonna be a little bit more difficult than that, but not too difficult. And it's something that's very versatile, modular, and something that you will use a lot on your gaming table. So without further ado, we are going to be making these large display piece trees. Now, in contrast with these, <laughs> I have dozens of these little guys here. Uh, I just bought them at my local gaming store. If you look close, they're literally just plastic with some foliage that I've based. These are great if you're just trying to throw a quick board together, you need lots of little trees, while these, on the other hand, if you look at it compared to a standard D&D miniature, are designed to be like a large focal point. And so we're gonna make a couple different sizes, but overall the concept is the same. I wanted something that was a higher quality than this, but not something that's so nice that it's like diorama quality, right? Like I'm not looking for perfection, I just want it to look real enough where it has a bit of a wow factor at the table. Um, if you've looked at tree tutorials before, you might recognize these as pipe cleaner trees, which were very popular for a while. I think they work great. They're my favorite way to make trees. And uh, I got them from the channel Encounter Terrain. If you guys want to go check them out, just Google Encounter Terrain pipe cleaner trees. And that is the initial way that I learned how to make these. But I've gone ahead, I've added a bark texture, I've based them, uh, I've added my own custom foliage and flocking that I think looks great, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so without further ado, let's get to crafting. So the first thing you need to do is grab a big handful of pipe cleaners. Now, take a section of those pipe cleaners, put them together, and start twisting them all together to make the trunk of your tree. Now, I'm heading to the bottom where I'm sectioning off the bundle into a couple different smaller sections, usually three or four, uh, and I'm gonna start twisting those together to make roots. Make sure you break off and twist as many little sections as you can to make it look like you have a bunch of root sections veering off. Now we're gonna do the same thing at the top of the tree. And if you want, like I am here, you can even pull a couple of the pipe cleaners aside to make a little side branch coming off. You can do that one or two times and then take the remaining bundle and twist it further upward so that you still have more trunk. This is roughly what it should look like when you're complete. Now let's work on the base. I'm gonna take some sections of MDF board, and I've decided I want my trees to be on top of rocks. So I'm taking a rock plaster mold from Woodland Scenics, and I already had a couple on hand. This is how they turn out when you're done. Now, with those plaster trees, I'm not showing you how to make them, but you can definitely just follow the instructions on whatever plaster you buy, pour them into the mold, and you'll get some rocks. Now. I'm taking that MDF board and cutting it into a relatively circular shape. The reason for that is you want it to look a bit more natural, but also it prevents the wood from warping when you put more materials on top. You might notice that some of these roots are a bit long and awkward, so I'm just gonna go in here and trim them down so they look a bit more natural and fit on the base. Same thing at the top. Now, we need to fasten this rock to the base. So I'm gonna take a hot glue gun, just put a little bit of hot glue all around the edges and in the middle, making sure that every possible area is pressed down. And we're gonna put that onto our MDF board. Just to try and make sure there are no gaps later and that it's really pressed down, I'm gonna go around the edges and just put some hot glue into any of those gaps that I see. Now, unless you want your tree to be fluffy, which I'm sure you don't, it's time to melt down these pipe cleaners. 
we're going to take a heat gun and just slowly put that all around every inch of this pipe cleaner tree. And what you're going to see that that does is all of those little fuzzy sections are slowly going to melt down onto the wire to give it more of like a firm and tree-like texture. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, one thing I've done in the past before I owned one was using a lighter, like a grill lighter or a pocket lighter and just running that flame all along the edge and you will produce the exact same result. So now we need to fasten these trees to the rocks. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take the roots and wrap them around the shape of the rock just so that it's easier for you to glue on in a moment. Now, take a hot glue gun and run it along the bottom of all of the roots. And before that glue dries, just take the tree, press it down against the rock and wait for it to dry. Wipe off the excess too, just so you don't have any obvious glue spots when it dries. Now it's time for us to make our ground texture. I'm gonna take some PVA glue, sand, and then I'm using a really cheap black and brown acrylic paint. That's just because I wanted to darken the brown down. If you wanted to start off with a naturally darker brown, that works as well. Now there are no exact measurements here. I'm just eyeballing everything. I do know that you wanna have a lot of the sand in there though, because the finished product needs to have like an earthy, grainy paste texture to it. And when everything's mixed up, you should be able to see that sand grain. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of backtracking. I should have sanded the edges of these boards down before I put the trees and the rocks on there. The goal is to just round them out a little bit and even give them a slope so that they blend in with your board better. Now, let's apply that ground material. Now, I noticed that my texture was still not quite grainy enough, so I'm just gonna go back and add a little bit more sand. Now, I wanted some rocks on here, so I just decided to go outside and grab a few pebbles to put on the base. Now while it's almost dry, here's a quick close-up of what everything should look like in person. Also, before they dry completely, try to pick them up and move them one time. You can see that it peels off over the edge there. If you take those off before they dry completely, it'll help round off the edges and make sure nothing's hanging off. Now we need a base coat for our texture and our future paint to stick to, so I'm just gonna take some black paint and Mod Podge and put that over the tree. Now these pipe cleaners are extremely porous, even with the, uh, the fact that they're melted down, so you might have to do this in two steps. You know, it looks great going on, but you'll notice once it dries that you can still see the color of the pipe cleaner underneath. So this is what mine looks like after a couple coats. Now here's where things got interesting. I tried out a lot of different mixtures for a bark material and I ultimately settled on the black Mod Podge, just simply mixed with a little bit of parsley. Now it's dried parsley, so it's gonna go on and give everything kind of like a crumbled peeling bark look. And you'll see I'm using a paintbrush and a crafting stick to try and just very delicately put it on the spots where I think it needs to be. So I didn't get it on video, but I did go back and spray paint all of the trees with a black spray paint just to try and really harden up that bark material one more time. So 
So now it's time to apply our paints. I'm gonna take a burnt umber and use that as the base coat for my tree, and a pewter gray is the base coat for my stones. Then I'm gonna dry brush the tree with a khaki color, and then dry brush both the stone and the tree with a pale gray. Then the tree is gonna get a black wash and the stone is gonna get a brown wash. Now I didn't choose to do this, but you could go back over the stone one more time after the fact with a white dry brush. Now you'll see I even painted the real rocks with the pewter gray, but that's only because I accidentally got some of the black paint and Mod Podge on it and I have to fix it. Now here comes the black wash on the tree to really bring everything together. Now I know when it goes on it looks a little bit too dark, but I promise you once the foliage is on there and the black wash dries, it's gonna look fantastic. Now I brown washed the stones and didn't show that, but now that you've done that, take a khaki paint and just dry brush over that bark one more time to bring those brown tones and highlights back out. Now here's where the trees start to come to life. Take some polyester stuffing, the stuff they basically use to make pillows and stuffed animals, and spray paint that with just a little bit of like a dark forest green color. We're also gonna need some spray adhesive and some dried oregano. Oh yeah, and some flocking. Now I went outside and spray painted mine green so it looks like this. Now we're just gonna rip off tiny thin little pieces and spread that over different branch sections of the tree. Now that you know where everything is going, get a hot glue gun and go back and put a little bit on all of the branches where you know the stuffing is gonna go. Press it down firmly to make sure that it's secure. Pour some of that dried oregano into a bowl, get out the spray adhesive, shake it up, and just spray a little bit onto the sections of styrofoam where you want your flocking to go. Now just dip that tree into the bowl, even pick some of that oregano up, dump it on the tree, get it underneath, and make sure that most of that stuffing is covered. Now I spray painted over all of it one more time with that green. If you don't do that, that oregano over time is gonna dry out and start to look really bad. 
Now, I'm actually gonna take some forest green paint and a wide brush, and I'm just gonna dip that brush into the paint, take some of it off, but not enough to do a dry brush, and just kind of dab it on to the top of all of the sections of leaves to give it a bit of a gradient effect. Now, grab that bag of light flocking as well as the spray adhesive, spray a little bit more on just the tops of the leaves, and sprinkle a tiny bit of that light, uh, that light flocking over the top. The reason we do this is because it's gonna change up the texture of the tree a bit and give it some diversity, as well as enhance that gradient look. Now, I ended up pouring on a little too much, so I had to go back and brush it off to make it not look as awkward, but overall the effect worked beautifully. Now by now you've made a perfectly usable and acceptable tree, but I like to go back and add a little bit more foliage to my bases. Here's a couple different turfs that I'm going to put on, as well as some more dried oregano to resemble some fallen dead leaves, and I'm even going to do a little bit of static grass. Grab a tacky glue, a PVA, or some kind of a basing glue and just kind of put it all around the bottom where the dirt areas are. Then take an old brush or a crafting stick and just kind of spread that around to make sure that it's not going to collect in any specific spot. Now, I'm going to start with the dried oregano and just slowly sprinkle a little bit of it on to resemble some fallen dead leaves. Now, I'm going to take some of that Woodland Scenics blended turf to give it also a little bit of like a dead grass or a mossy look. You could also use some of the bright green if you choose to go that route. Now here's my static grass applicator. Truly, you don't need to do any of this. This is just something I'd like to do for some additional basing. What you've done up to this point is still more than acceptable. But if you want to do it, go ahead and take some basing glue, put it around the bottom, and then just follow the instructions for your static grass applicator. And please, please, please be safe when you do it because these things do put out quite a bit of a shock. And here I'm just cleaning up some of the edges. Now, if you want to enhance your bases even further, you can add some additional bushes like these from Woodland Scenics. You could get some gamer grass or a similar brand of flowers or tufts. Really, it's up to you. Add anything you want. There's lots of products online. And that's it. I hope you guys love the way that your trees turned out because I know I'm super happy with the way mine did. If you guys did like this video, please hit the like button because it helps other people find it and it lets me know that you guys enjoyed what you saw. And if you want to see more tutorials, which I definitely have more coming in the future, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, and I look forward to making whatever the next project is. So in the meantime, enjoy your new trees and I will see you guys soon. Bye.